Well, hello and welcome, everybody. I've got a fun problem here. I had a blast doing this one, and I'm glad you're going to hang out with me. We're going to do it together. Might learn something. Definitely going to have a good time. Here are the details. We've got a square, A, B, C, D. Its side lengths are four units, whatever they happen to be. And from C to E is a length of three. And those points you see on the circle, those are where the line is tangent to the circle. And our job is to find the area of that red circle. So if you'd like to try it on your own, go ahead and give it a shot. Now, if you come up with a solution that's better than mine, leave me, leave me a comment. I would love to hear how you did it. If you learned something new or just had a good time, let me know. I'd love to hear. I love to read your comments and interact with you guys. So, well, if you want to try it, try it on your own. Here's what I'm going to do. My plan of attack is this. I'm going to take and find the easy stuff like the side B to E and the angle B, E, C. Then what I'm going to try to do is express the radius of the circle in terms of D to E, which is a length of one. And, well, what's going to end up happening is we're going to end up using this pretty cool identity for the tangent of half of an angle. So it might be something new for you. Stay tuned. It was new for me. Well... If I did know it, I forgot it, so I think it was pretty cool. Let's go ahead and dive into this one, shall we? All right, so first thing first, B to E, that's going to be a distance of 5 because, of course, that's a right triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5, maybe the most famous of the Pythagorean triples, right? Now, angle B, E, C. We could find out exactly what it is. However, a lot of the times, the a lot of the time, these problems have beautiful rational solutions or they might be irrational but you know square root of 3 or pi or something like that. Anyway, if we used trig to find this exact value, we might lose some of that simplicity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to express tangent, sine and cosine of this angle theta as you see here, four thirds, four fifths, and three fifths. So let's tuck that information away over here. And, well, we can claim that DE is a length of one because that's a square with side lengths of four. And from C to E is three, so that leaves us a distance of one right there. All right. Now let's zoom in and take a look at our situation with our circle right here. So we'll say the center is here, and we'll call a radius R. Well, that means that this distance down here is r. And in green, we don't know what that is, so let's call it x. I know that x plus r is equal to 1 because that's from d to e, and the distance is 1. As you can see, a screenshot of our original problem right here. All right, that's pretty cool. So now I also know that this distance is going to be x because... Well, they're both tangent, and intersecting tangent lines have the same distance, so that's pretty cool. And I also know that the radius at each of these points is going to be perpendicular because the radius is perpendicular to the tangent line at the point of tangency. So I've got this pretty little kite here. Do you see it? Let's go ahead and clean up our screen a little bit. Now, this is our angle theta from before, this theta here where we have sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, so now... Theta and this angle, well, they're they're collinear. They're a linear pair, so they're supplementary. They make a straight angle, right? Now, the angle in green over here, and for now we could call it M, we could say that K and M are also supplementary because, well, we have a quadrilateral, a kite. Two of the angles are 90 each. That makes 180, leaving 180 left. So these two are also supplementary, which means that angle theta is exactly the same as this angle that we called M right there. So, pretty cool, right? All right, so now, triangles are a lot easier to deal with, and if we have a kite, we can bisect the angle, and it will just make two beautiful little right triangles just like this right here. So we bisected this angle, and it's going to intersect that other um, that other intersection here. So we have this lovely triangle, and... Well, let's zoom in and see what we got right here. So here's what we know. We know that the tangent of theta divided by 2 is opposite over adjacent, so that would be x divided by r. So we can solve that for x and say r times tangent of theta divided by 2 is equal to x. All right. Now let's see if we can solve this, see if we can simplify this a little bit. This is where we're going to show you the identity for tangent of half of an angle, right? Now maybe you already know it, but... I'm going to show where it comes from. So if we take a half circle, we say its radius is 1, right? It doesn't matter. It's just a unit. Uh, and let's say we have this angle right here we'll call theta. So let's go ahead and drop a 
a perpendicular line, and sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so sine of theta is this distance right here divided by 1, and cosine is this side over here divided by 1. That leaves this other part over here to be 1 minus the cosine of theta because the radius is 1. So from the center to over here is also a distance of 1. All right, so now you see this angle marked as k? Well, k and theta, they are a straight line. They make a straight line, so they're 180, right? And let's go ahead and make another triangle over here. Now this triangle, we'll call those two angles M. They are the same because, well, this is an isosceles triangle. Both of the sides are the radius, so M is the same as the other M, so K plus 2M is 180 as well. All right, so if we solve for theta and we solve for 2M, we find that 2M is equal to theta, so then, of course, M is equal to half of theta. All right, so now let's clean this up a little bit right here and look at another right triangle. Do you see it right here? This triangle right here, this is the adjacent side. This is the opposite side. So the tangent of theta divided by 2 is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that's sine of theta divided by cosine of theta plus 1 because from the center to here is the cosine of theta, from here to the opposite end over there is 1, so the adjacent side is cosine theta plus 1. So now we know that tangent of half of theta is equal to sine theta divided by cosine theta plus 1. That's pretty cool right there, so let's go ahead and substitute that value in, replace tangent of theta divided by 2 with this, and we know the expressions for sine and for cosine. Sine is a sine of theta is four-fifths, so we're going to put the four-fifths in the numerator, and the cosine of theta is three-fifths, so we're going to put three-fifths of one as our denominator. So let's go ahead and substitute those in. Four-fifths divided by three-fifths plus one, getting a common denominator of five. That's, going to, of course, going to be eight-fifths. And we have a little division right here, which is actually multiplication by the reciprocal. The fives reduce to one. Four over eight is famously known as one-half. So we can clean this up and say that one-half of the radius is equal to x. So x is half of the radius. Pretty cool. So now we know that x plus r x plus the radius is 1, and I have another expression for x, so I'm just going to go ahead and substitute those in right here. So 1 half r plus r is equal to 1. Getting a common denominator, we see that 3 halves the radius is equal to 1, so multiply by the reciprocals, and we reciprocal, and we see that the radius is 2 thirds. That is pretty cool right there. So putting that in back into context of our original diagram, kind of zooming back out to what we started with, that red circle has a radius of two-thirds. So, finding the area, pi r squared, two-thirds squared is four-ninths. The area of that red circle is four-ninths pi. I had a blast doing this problem. I hope you did too. If you had a different solution, I know of quite a few of them. Um, if you had a different one, I would really love to hear from you. If you had a good time, leave me a thumbs up. And hey, if that tangent of half a theta was a new thing for you, I'd love to hear about it. Hey, until next time, I hope you have a great day.